My guys, I really freaking deadass made a whole PowerPoint just to talk about team composition. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't be perceived as too nerdy by you guys. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. And today we're going to be talking about co-op group play team compositions, not just your three weapons, but I'm talking about all 12 weapons, four people, three weapons each, etc., etc. And so, yes, like I said, I freaking actually just put together a PowerPoint because I really couldn't be stuffed just playing around in Photoshop and shit. And so let's Let's get into this one and as always I will drop this in the description below. And so with that being said, welcome to the presentation, welcome to team compositions for your co-op slash group play. This is essentially a guide to kind of help you with your team composition again with all 12 weapons to kind of go from like the minimum to utter domination. This will hopefully be relevant to all of the existing game modes as well as the future ones. With that being said, let's start off with the team composition goals. And so whenever we are clearing any team content, the first step is to just survive. If you can survive, then that is already okay. And then if you're able to survive, actually not only survive, but survive and clear, then you start changing your team composition to go from like a traditional tank, healer, DPSs to maybe taking less tanking and less healing capabilities and more DPS. So therefore you wanna to get towards your comfy clears. And then after that, you're gonna go from your comfy clears into utter domination, where maybe sometimes it can only be achieved by whales. Sometimes it could be achieved by like, just like completely gear capping, over capping stuff. And so that's essentially like your life cycle of your team content. You want to just survive first. And then this is going to be hopefully using like your traditional comps and going all the way to potentially just four DPS comps for utter domination. And so everything that matters to achieve any of these three goals is these things over here, your individual units, team composition, traits, matrices, and mechanics slash resistances. The last one is actually really important because there are some game modes that are like, oh, minus 50% volt damage or like, oh, plus 50% uh, ice resistance. So therefore you have to take something else. All right, now with that, let's talk about the roles overview. So as we all know, there is the DPS, there's a tank support and the balanced role. It's something I want to talk about because it's actually quite interesting. And so most of us are actually quite familiar with all of these, but I just wanted to run through them really quick because when you actually write it down, some of them don't look too bad. Like I looked at the balanced one and the balanced one seems pretty freaking decent. Starting off with the DPS, we have deal as much damage as possible. And so essentially the TLDR is in team play, you will get plus 40% final damage, nothing else. For tanks, they do get the damage reduction, but in team play, they get an extra 20% damage reduction as well as the shatter and the aggro that they already had. And then as for supports, they're quite straightforward, healing and then more healing. Um, not always 100% what we want, but it is actually quite nice. And with that, I kind of want to quickly talk about balance because it's actually not too bad. So 25% final damage, 25% damage reduction, 20% shatter and 20% healing. And so if I was to, for example, compare this to like something like DPS, you're losing out 15% final damage for 25% damage reduction, shatter, healing, etc., etc. And so obviously, as the name suggests, this is quite a balanced comp. The downside is, is that if you are going to be going for this one, you are trading up a tank for a DPS, right? Or rather a DPS for a tank. So you see, you only have one DPS over here and you're forced to run a support as well. I think, I think that this is definitely viable, but we definitely want to move more towards like the DPS, the pure DPSs, the pure roles. However, with that being said, I'm pretty sure everyone is quite familiar with this. And so let's move on to the example role composition. So for one particular person, if you're taking up a DPS or a tank or a support role, this is what it could look like, right? So you've got your DPSs over here at one, two, DPS, DPS into support, DPS, DPS, support, DPS, 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 support. You could actually take DPS and DPS and a tank, but generally speaking, the DPS is mm, not really. And so let me quickly talk a little bit more about this flex role over here, because it is actually really, really important depending on what stage you're at in terms of the survive and clear versus auto domination. The flex role, generally speaking, is usually used for three purposes approximately. First is for extra shatter, so that you can help the team shatter. The second is for extra healing in case you really can't survive with just the healer. And the third is just to do your own role better. So I've covered like most of those cases here. Again, these are just example role compositions. These are obviously not the exhaustive list. This is literally just me like, okay, well, DPS, DPS, and then this one is probably one of like the best DPS ones. And then you've got some other options like DPS, DPS into a support. However, 
What you need to start thinking about is what do you offer to your team with the weapon composition that you have selected. So for example, this one over here, you have the Samir, Zubasa, and Nemesis. You're gonna be doing a lot of damage, but you are not gonna be able to actually help your team shield break. On the other hand, you're gonna be providing a little bit of extra AOE heals with the Nemesis. So that's actually pretty good. And so if you do actually, in fact, take a composition like this, that means that the rest of your teammates, the other three teammates need to make sure that they take enough shatters to make up for your lack of shattering. Another cool example would be this one right here where my face was. So you see that there was a king, there is Tsubasa and a crow. There is no healing over here. So that means that you can help in shattering, but you need to make sure that the rest of the team has enough heals. And so it's with this kind of logic that is actually going to help you build the rest of your teams. And especially because, uh, and I need to stress this more and more, you can only use what you have, right? So for me, I could use the first comp over here, the Huma, Meryl and the Nemesis, but I can't use this one down here because I don't have a king. I can't use the second one because I don't have a Coco. What this means is that I am going to be a shatter deficit without a king, but I can actually offer heals if I was to play the tank role. Running through a few more examples, we've got Meryl, we've got Anna, and we've got Samir down here. You could actually take a DPS if all of the healing is covered and you have enough shield break. Then obviously you want to be doing more even as a tank when the boss is downed or like they're broken or whatever, you can actually hop into Samir and help cut down on your runtime, speed up the process, and hopefully maybe get a fantastic clip. Last of all, what we've got is a support comps with the flexes. So we've got healer, kind of healer, plus damage, healer, and shield, and then Huma. So for example, maybe the Coco is not enough. Maybe we do need to run the dual heals. Or maybe if like this is all I have, the Coco, the Zero, and the Huma, one of my other teammates can actually run a flex nemesis. And so what I'm really trying to get at here is that it's not just about you. It's about the rest of your team. And that is kind of what I'm trying to say with this slide here. Generally speaking, for the hardest content, you you run a holy trinity, right? You got the tank team, you got the support, you got two DPS players. And so this team is relatively balanced out, right? We've got the tanks, we've got shield breaker, shield breaker, shield breaker, shield breaker. We've got healer, 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 and healer. And then we do have some level of DPS, right? Where we have the kings, we have the crow, and we have the Samir here. If, for example, your party starts running and you're like, oh, we're actually surviving this a lot easier than we thought, then maybe we start taking out some heals. So for example, maybe like the nemesis becomes a Samir, maybe this king over here can become a Samir or a Crow, depending on if it's enough to shield break. And then this healer, Pepper down here, we could also consider changing her out for another DPS. Triple DPS, I mean, it'll work. Just make sure that it doesn't actually try to take any resources from your rotation. Samir, Bullet Rain, it's using stamina and Shido, I believe she actually uses dodges as well. So maybe an auto attacker, maybe like Crow or something. And then alongside stripping away your supports, your healers at least, you could start actually stripping away your tanks as well. Maybe this tank isn't actually required and we could get away with running a balanced guy over here. Maybe we can run three DPSs instead and run one support so nobody is tanking. Maybe we're feeling really good and we could run three DPS people instead and just one support. And then eventually, 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 hopefully for the top tier clears, you're gonna be looking at full DPS comps with some level of sustain. Exactly like the Samir, Crow, and Nemesis comps. Have four people running this, no tank required, no dedicated support required. You just do DPS, 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 DPS. You go shield break, shield break, shield break, shield break, and then heals when required. I would say that this is going to be like your peak gameplay and it might not be Samir, it could be Crow with the jetpack tech, man that jetpack tech is actually freaking crazy. But you can kind of see like the progression, right? You're going from a holy trinity that is very very safe, tank, support, healing that tank and then DPS doing the damage to everybody doing damage and just trying to clear as fast as possible out of domination. Alright and so with that, hopefully that kind of makes sense in terms of team comps. I'm going to move on to the next thing which is going to be traits over here and generally speaking, these are the traits that you're going to be looking at for each of the roles. To be honest, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory and I've actually made a whole traits video. If you guys have not seen that yet, like go over and check it out. But the TLDR is that if you just want DPS, you're going to be taking one of these four traits. If you want to tank, you want to take these two. However, Huma is the preferred choice because Meryl only really works for your Frost opponents. And then lastly, with support, you've also got the Coco and the Nemesis. And uh, what I do want to say is that similar to the logic that we used over here, where we started peeling out like the supports and the tanks to hopefully go into a DPS role, traits are another place that you can actually do that. So for example, maybe we do need to run this Holy Trinity, but however, you decided that your tank is actually over tanking. They're a bit too tanky. So maybe instead, why don't we take a DPS trait to help lower the clear time, right? And so you wouldn't take the Huma, you would take a Samir, for example. Actually, that's a really bad example because the tank's gonna get hit. 
uh, you're going to want the crow instead. So yeah, the same logic, very like tactical approach to achieve the overarching goal of moving towards that giga giga busted cop. That's pretty much it. Like the TLDR of this video is actually, let's just all go try to go DPS, break them and a little bit of support on the side. In terms of matrices, like as long as you remember the goals, this is really, really self-explanatory, right? Because you've got your DPS ones over here. Samir's is like, oh, do more damage as you do more damage. Crow's is something similar. King's is, oh, you can do shield break. And then after shield break, you do more damage. Damage, 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 damage. Like I don't even include the blues. I don't include like a whole bunch of other ones. These are just examples because it is really, really easy to tell. You just read the description. You'll be like, oh yeah. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, it's damage, it goes into my DPS. On the other hand, the interesting thing about the Huma Matrix is that it's kind of a tank one, but it's actually more offensive. And so I would probably recommend going for something like the Meryl one. The Echo Matrix and a lot of the SR matrices as well, the Pepper one, they're actually fantastic, very generalist, I would say. And then obviously you've got others like the Shido for if you are going to go the Shatter route. And then on the other hand, you've got Coco for more healing, Zero for more shielding, which you should only use with Zero really and the nemesis in the form of an offensive support, which is actually really nice. However, I don't know about you guys, but I am not freaking swimming in cash. And so like out of all of these matrices, I have some of the SRs and that's kind of it. I want to talk about the more povo approach to matrices. And that is leveling up each of these matrices, right? So we've got four different categories. We've got emotion, we've got mind, we've got memory, and we've got belief slash faith down here. And the TLDR that I want to give on these matrices is that essentially upgrade the ones that are actually going to be beneficial to your role. So for example, you can see over here, DPS, deal as much damage as possible. We can see that the emotion one is giving 42 attack. However, this one down here, the faith one is actually giving 72. The memory one is also giving 72 attack. On the other hand, we've got HP 7.8k up here on the thought slash mind one, but down here, it's actually only 3569 for the same equivalent level. It's the SRs that you have to really compare, right? And so obviously in an ideal world, you wouldn't actually have to pick between each of these. However, some of us are really povo. And so this is that priority, right? So if you're a tank, you want to be going for the HP one first. You want to do mine first before the other ones. That kind of logic, right? And so with that, I do believe that is pretty much the end. Like these two are just references. Uh, yeah, that's the video. I do want to leave you guys with a question and that is out of all of the different roles, which one do you prefer? For me personally, I actually really, really enjoy the tank slash support role. I unfortunately don't have Coco, I don't have Zero, so it's very, very unlikely that I'll even be able to run support. And so it's much, much more likely that I'm going to be running the tank role, which is going to be like my Huma, my Meryl, and maybe a Nemesis for healing. Or maybe I'll take my Samir, or maybe I'll take a, uh, well, I don't have a King, but I wish I did. <laughs> anyway, my guys, it's not about me it's about you guys and on that note i really just want to hammer home that it's not only about you guys but it's also actually about all of your teammates as well regardless let me know which role you actually prefer down in the comments below if you did end up enjoying this slideshow presentation then i would really appreciate like a like on the video subscribing to the channel or turning on that notification bell but otherwise as uh, as my girl pepper once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye